Yo, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Power Hub Saturday, episode one. My name is Adewale Yusuf. I'm a lead in Nigeria Power Platform or your state user group. So we are here again with our Power Platform, Power Hub Saturday, and we are bringing to you a lot of goodies and a lot of stuff in Power Platform. So today we'll be focusing on the um, Power Query. We do a lot of stuff in Power Query. We'll be showing you how powerful Power Query is. Like, in fact, I met somebody last year and that person said Power Query is like somebody they should be worshipping. Like a thing somebody should be worshipping because it saves you a lot of time, it saves you a lot of stress, and it saves you a lot of, a lot of let me say, uh, manual process. So today I'm not here alone. I'm here with our Hoga, our very own Africa um, MVP and also MCT. He's one of my boss. So his name is uh, Michael. Olafusi. So, Michael Olafusi, can you say hi to our audience? Hello, everybody, and it's a pleasure. Okay, that's it from me. Yeah, hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Hello, Michael. everyone. Yes, Great. we can hear yes. you. So, hi, everybody, and it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Okay, so thank you, Michael. Um, I think your internet is a bit challenging, but um, your audio is off. We can't hear you now. It's on, yeah. Okay, okay, I... so. Okay. Yeah, so hmm. thank you. Yeah, carry on. Mr. Michael. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate you. And uh, we are very, very glad. We are saying thank you for joining us today. And you are part of the people in the community that shares knowledge to people that empower people. In fact, I'm always like, I always want to be like you. Those times when I was trying to be an analyst, I was trying to do some stuff. You are part of the people I always look up to that. Uh, these are the part of people I always like to, I always like to work with and the rest. And um, thank you. Thank God you're able to join us. Um, thank God you're able to join us today. So we appreciate you, sir. Right? So before we start, Pleasure. let me just Pleasure. ask you. How did you see this power platform field or data analytics field that everybody is just trying to come in? People are trying to learn, some people are finding it difficult to learn. So, how did you see this power platform and data analytics? And what advice do you have for people? Okay. So, uh, a bit my own uh, experience would not be the same as for those trying to learn now, because uh, for me, I was kind of like there when Excel, because a lot of many of these things were parts pinned out from Excel. So when we talk about the Power Platform, you know, say the Power Query, the Power Pivot, the Power Map, the Power View, which at the point they combined to make Power BI, it used to be like add-ons on Excel. Then maybe when we talk about say the the Power Automate, the Power Hub, those ones were things that okay, if you had always been an Excel person, you might not have been exposed to but because i also do the programming side i used to do uh there's there's this thing called xaml so which the power apps kind of uh, follow the approach of so where you have this canvas so a bit i'm a familiar a bit based on my xaml experience trying to build some uh windows app i mean more like desktop app applications before so for me i had a small kind of like uh pre experiences that were like leading up to this that me now looking at power apps is not completely new to me but for someone else who maybe you've not been having to do stuff in other aspects of um maybe programming or even excel or all these other tools and these things are now looking completely new to you what i will just say is uh well you just have to start from where you you are because even for me when I was learning them in the in the way they were before, yes, they were new. But then again, you take it from where you are and you try and build up. Ooh. So you take what you already. Know. If I'm good in Excel, then I'm going to start with the aspect of the power platforms that I can take my knowledge of Excel and easily translate. You know, not have to start from scratch. And then if you are someone who is social media savvy, 
you know, you've already been using maybe if this, then that, IFTT, or you've been using Zapier, then you will fill at home with Power Automate because that, that's just exactly what Power Automate does. It helps you to connect all those different um, disparate products together to automate workflows. And if you're someone who have some bit of programming background, you've been developing maybe desktop applications, maybe use Python to develop applications before, or even you use Access, or you've used some things that you've had to build like an, a canvas, you know, do like a user UX, and then put some programming, some binding to some data models, some database, some crude, you know, create, read, update, delete kind of a workflow. Then you will feel at home with power, with power, and then you will be completely new to Power Virtual or JJ because that one is it's a bot and then um, it's completely new technology in terms of the way it's built up. So that's the only one that maybe uh, everybody will just have to start from scratch with. But then that's my own uh, perspective to it. Whatever it is that you're already good with, uh, use that to be the leverage to move into any of all these power platforms and from there start branching out, start trying to make them talk to one another. So that's my own opinion. I don't know what's yours. You know, I'm sure you do have a unique uh, Yes. <laughs> so th thank you very much, uh, my Oga, Michael. So for me, really, you said everything. Oh, I would like to really explain those stuff again. And then, like you said, social media is part of the thing that inspire people. And then you can always go on social media, learn different things. You can follow different people. We have a group on the um, Power Platform on um, what's it called Telegram that you can also join. People come together, expert, even beginner and intermediate. They share experience, they solve problems for people. You can always make use of all those uh, social media as well. And also, we have some of guys like uh, Mr. Michael, like Ahmed Oyelowo, like our other MVP, uh, David Brown. We have so many people in Nigeria. We have Deji Polani, we have myself, David Abu, and the rest that you can always talk to online and they are always there to respond to you. So Power Platform is something very, very simple that you can just go into. And if you are looking into changing your career, you should know that um, Power Platform is the right thing for you to do. So basically today, we will not waste uh, time. I will just introduce you to what we'll be doing today in our Power Hub Saturday episode one. So we promise that I'll be bringing this episode to you twice in a month. And this is the second time in this month of, um, the second, yeah, second time in the month of June. So next month, we are bringing another interesting person uh, that you should be looking for us to see. Michael, do you know who that is? We are bringing Leila Ekti, right? The guru of uh, Power BI itself next month, right? So that, that will be our episode two. So today, basically, this is the episode one. We are starting with something called uh, Power Query, which is the most powerful tool when it comes to data washing machine. So uh, the host of this program is a Power Platform User Group, Nigeria or your state. So we host this program and our aim is to empower people to make sure that we make people achieve their dream by changing their career. Also with me today, Michael has introduced himself. We have Michael Olafusi, he's our most valuable professional MVP. He's also a Microsoft Satisfied Trainer. He's the CEO of Edu, um, Edu Biz Nigeria Limited, and also is one of the most powerful person when it comes to data in Africa, not only Nigeria, in Africa. So today we'll be talking about Power Query Secret, the world powerful data machine. So there are some secrets that most people are not aware in, in Power Query, even those are already been using Power Query. If you're an intermediate, you're an expert, I'm very sure that you're going to learn a lot of new things in Power Query today and some tricks in Power Query as well. So this is me. In fact, I don't really need to introduce myself. And I think most people know uh, this guy already. In fact, this picture is even popular than myself. So my name is Adewale Yusuf. I'm a business agent analyst and a trainer at the brand consulting. I'm a Microsoft Satisfied trainer as well, and I'm hoping to be an MVP like our Oga, uh, Oga Michael, right? And I'm sure our, another of our guys is looking at this uh, webinar right now. Well, Oga Shei is also our lead and uh, MCT lead in Africa, and then it's also our MVP, right? I'm trying to be like you too. Okay, so today I'll be showing you a lot of full stuff, but before we start, um, I will start with uh, managing folder parts with parameters. So the problem that I notice is that when most of us is sending out our um, Power BI files to people, if you are not sharing that file, 
So you are, you are, you are now um, sharing your um, Power BI files to people. And when you share it to maybe your colleagues, you are not using Power BI web this time. So you are just sharing your work on Power BI desktop to people. So when you share that your work to people, let's say you have like 15 tables in that your Power Query. Immediately your colleague open that table, they find it difficult to, to change the data source because it should just keep on showing error because the initial data um, folder part is not from them. So most of them find it difficult changing the folder part, especially when you are changing like 15 or 20 folder part. So to, to, to eradicate this, you can build a little parameter and concentrate on one single folder part. So when you send that files to your colleague, they just need to sing, change a single folder part. And once you send that for that part, everything will update in their report. So that takes me to my demo today before I hand over to our guy, Michael. So I will show you how to manage a folder part in the Power Query. And this is how to do that. If I go to my, this is Power BI. We are all aware with Power BI. Power Query is a powerful tool that was invented in Excel in 2013, if I'm right, Mr. Michael, in um, 2013, right? And also, in Power BI. So in Power BI, you can also use Power Query. In Power, in Excel, you can also use Power Query. On the Dynamics 365, I think Power Query is also called Flow. It's also on Common Data Service on CDS. You can also use um, Power Query on SQL and some other apps as well. So for today, we are using Power Query on the um, um, Power BI. And we already know in my Power BI, if I go to transform data to take me to, to my Power Query interface, not Power BI right now, Power Query interface. And in this, my Power Query interface, I already have like three data sets in this interface. And if you look at these three data sets, I have um, Estate Intel, I have Sectoral Data, and I have HIV positive. So let's assume that I'm sending this data out to, to my colleagues. And this data now, I want to make sure that they can actually change the data source immediately I send it to them and it won't give them stress. So when you are sending this data out, what you should try and do, you should try and do a source setting. If you look at this step to your right, if you go to this sort and you click on setting, most of us normally use, um, let me click on my setting. Most of us normally use this advanced, this basic. We don't probably use this advanced. Most of us use basic and advanced is very, very cool as well, right? So I would need to go to advanced and show you some stuff you can do in advanced. So if I click in advance, look at this. So I have a folder part. I have this. I have um, adiwale.com, blah, blah. So I can decide to create a parameter for this particular um, sheet. And to do that, if I come here to my own tab, you will see manage parameter, right? So once I click on the new parameter, I want to create a new parameter. And the new parameter I want to create is called, uh, let me call it um, folder part. I can call it folder, folder part so that people can just use this and just type a folder and just put it there. So suggested value, I want it to just be a, any value. Then which folder part did I want to put here? So now I can go to any of my browser on my system and pick uh, maybe the folder part that I want that particular things to be, right? So if I go to my desktop, let me go to data and let me pick a folder part from my laptop. So if I pick this folder part and I paste it here, so that means I'm saying that anytime I send these files to you, make sure that you change this, you have this uh, um, um, folder on your desktop called data, you have another folder called demo, then you can paste your part here, then everything should work fine. So I've created a parameter and this is my parameter here. So once I go to my data, I can now set this parameter to this, my new data that I just created. So if I go to this place, I can copy the name of this file. Let me just copy the name of this file. So if I copy the name of this file like this, and I come to this file part, I'll choose a parameter, right? Once I choose a parameter, this is a parameter called um, folder part in my advanced. I'll come here, choose a parameter, and then I will paste my the name of the file. I will just paste it here. Once I paste it here, that means this file is only working with the name of the file. Any folder part that you paste here, it will work with your file, right? Then I'll click OK. So I've set my folder part for that, for that HIV. Then I'll also go to the next one, which is sectoral part. I'll go to the source. I'll come to setting. 
then from setting i'll go to advanced from advanced i'll copy the name of the file as well once i copy the name of the file i will change this my file part to parameter and i'll paste the name of the file here now I'll click ok as well now i've changed the path now i also need to go to the third one so when you are sending the data to your boss or your colleagues always make sure you do this so that it will ease their stress of trying to change a data a, 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 a data source so once i copy this as well i'll paste it here i'll change this to parameter which is my folder part parameter and i'll click ok so i've set all this particular data to a parameter right so once i have maybe for example now this data now change so these are the data so let's assume these are my data and let's say all this data change right maybe i copy all this data out and I take it to maybe, um, let me take it to another place. Maybe I paste it under, um, let me paste it under, um, let me just create a new, a new folder, paste it there. So let's say I create a new folder here, a new folder, then I just, um, I said new demo. So I paste it under new folder. I paste all the data here. You know, I've moved the location of the file right so now if i go to my power query and then i i refresh on this data there will definitely be a problem because the 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 part of the of the file is now different right the source of the file is now different so there definitely going to be a problem so just look at that it's definitely going to be a problem because the source is now different so sometimes it's just be showing error I'm trying to refresh. So it's still refreshing, still refreshing. I just changed my folder part. I changed it to this new demo. Then once I let me if I let me click on close and apply and let me come back. So you see that when you, when you do that and you send your files to people they find it difficult to change the path because the path is not from their system. So if I now go back to Power Query now, let me go back to Power Query, still loading. My Power Query is still loading. Okay, so thank you, loaded. So let me go back to Power Query. Once I go back to Power Query, my Power Query, uh, let me see if the source is, is, not, is not the same now. I'm sure the source should be different now. Very fresh all. Okay, so it's, it's really not coming up. Um, I guess my system is trying to, I guess my system is trying to do something, but let me see. So I expect this thing to just pop up with error right now because I've changed the path. This is the error that I want the system to show, right? But now, okay. it's now showing oh, the error. Oh, so now it's showing. Yeah, so can you see I don't the think error? the others can see it. Have you sent uh, it to live? I think I'm the one on yes. live, right? Yeah, I think it's live. No. Um, okay, so let me do that again. It's not on live. Okay. Let me just quickly do that. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's live now. Right? Can you see it? Yes, it is now. Okay, so yes, the data, yes, because, I've moved, because I've moved the data, now it's not showing error. So if you send this file to somebody, this is how they are going to see because their folder part is different. So what you just need to do is to go to wherever, wherever that folder is and go and copy the part. So let me copy the part of the new folder that I just created. So look at this folder. This is where I have the new file now, right? I just need to click on this place at the top here. Then I'll copy my folder part. Can you see that? I'll copy my folder part. So once I copy it, I'll just go back to my Power BI. And I will come to this my folder part parameter. Look okay, at this parameter here. And I will just paste it inside this parameter. Once I paste it, you see that my table is now coming back automatically. 
Can you see that? So before I, because I change the parameter now, the tables are back alive. Can you see? They are back alive. Even if you have 100 tables, once you paste that for that part, now all of them will be back at, alive instead of changing the source one by one. So we don't have a lot of time. Another thing I want to show you is that many of us find it, if you are trying to connect to data online, we find it difficult because some websites end with, uh, let's say, .asp. I don't know, maybe you have noticed that. Some websites end with .asp. And when people are trying to connect to that table, the table will not come, will not come up. So let's say I have this data on a particular website. Let me go to a website now. And on this website, on this particular website, um, I have a data from CBN. I have a data from CBN like this. If you look at this data and you scroll up, this is CBN exchange rate. And if you scroll down here, you see a table, right? And in this table, if I connect my Power BI to this table, I may not be able to pull out this data. In fact, let's try that. Let me connect my Power BI to that table. Let me connect my Power BI to that table. If I come to new source, like we already know, and I click on web, I click on web, and then I copy the, I've already copied the link, and I click on OK. Let's see what's going to happen once I click on OK. It's connecting, connecting, connecting. Yeah, so I have my navigator. So now let's check if we have the table on the website in this our navigator to the link I connected to. So let me show you this. Uh, so many people don't know the, this trick, and this trick is very, very efficient, especially when you're trying to connect with .asp website or some website that doesn't give you access to connect to their table straight up. So you can always use this trick. My navigator is still loading. Okay, so if you look at my navigator, it's loading. I can see table view and web view. Okay, so look at this table. If I click on table one, for example, let's see whether our exchange rate is here. Our exchange rate is here. Is our exchange rate here? Okay, it's not there. I can only see home about us. Then if I check table two, is in table two? No. Table three, is in table three? No. Table four, is in table four? No. Is in table five? Um, no. Is in table six? Exchange rate is not here. You can see that. Table seven, table eight, even table nine. So if you look at all these tables that we have here, we can't find this data here. These are data here. We can't find it, right? So the most appropriate way to connect to this kind of website is by connecting to this. Look at this. They have something called export exchange rate result to Excel or CSV. Can you see that? Anytime you see this on any website, anytime you see this on any website, in fact, let me zoom it so people can see it. Anytime you see this on any website, you see this thing, export exchange rate. Anytime you see that export, just right click on it and copy link address, right? Instead of copying the link of uh, the website itself, just right click on this, copy the link itself, right? Now go to your Power Query. If I go to my Power Query, I click on New Source Web, and I paste um, my link in the web. Let's say I paste my link in the web, and I click OK. Let's see what's going to happen now. I've been able to connect directly to that data without connecting to that website. So anytime people have built something, can you see the can you see the data? This is the data already www.cbn.gov.ng. You just need to come here, open as, I think the data is CSV, so I'll open it as CSV. So once you open it as CSV, can you see your data is now in Power Query, right? Unlike what you have before. In fact, this data shows, uh, if I check this, um, my date, this data shows data from 2019, I think, to 2016, I guess. Can you see 2016? 2016 to 2019, right? But if you go to the website, the website is only showing, uh, I think, just um, a data preview of just a week or a month, right? So that's how to dynamically connect to a website export data. So I need to hand over to Mr. Michael, but before I do that, let me just show you the last demo quickly. I will just quickly show my last demo. 
then then we'll do that. So the last demo is that how do you consolidate multiple table inside a multiple PDF? So you have a PDF that have like 20 day, 20 table, right? And you have uh, just a PDF have 20 table and you have like 15 PDF. Imagine 20 times 15, that is a lot. It's like you are connecting to almost 250 or 200 and something table. And with Power Query, you can easily do that. So if I go to my, um, let me go to a data. So if I go to my Power Query and I open the, let me just open the data and show you how the data looks like. So I got that data from stock, from stock exchange, and then in stock exchange, my my let me go to the data. Let me just go to the data. Yeah, look at this. So this is the data from stock exchange. I have three PDF, PDF one, PDF two, PDF three. If I open that PDF, in fact, let me open that PDF so you can see what is inside the PDF. If I open the PDF, I have a table here. This is one table. If I scroll down, I have another table just inside one single PDF. Can you see how many tables I have? I have close to like 10 tables inside a single PDF, right? And if I open another one, the second one, I still have uh, plenty PDF inside the second one. Open up, open up, open up. Yeah, so inside the second one, which is data two, I still have a lot of table inside this one. Can you see? I have a lot of table inside this one. And I want Power Query to be able to suck all this table and connect to all of them, right? So I'm just going to go to Power Query. I'm going to go to New Source, but I'll click on More. But this time, I will not connect to PDF, right? If I want to extract from a single PDF, I can connect to PDF. But now I'm not extracting from a single PDF. I'm connecting to a folder, a folder that contains all those PDF. That's what I'm connecting to. And this is the folder right here. For those that can't see it, this is the folder right here. So I'm going to connect to this folder. Once I click on folder, I'll click on connect. Once I click on connect, I'll just click on browse. Then I'll look for where my folder is. I think it's all that data, then data demo, then this is the data called stock exchange. Then once I click OK on stock exchange, I can also click OK. Then to load me to navigator, right? Then you see how I'm going to combine like almost 10 um, table inside the inside a single uh, PDF, then 10 times 3, that's like 30 tables, right? Then I'll click on combine and transform, right? Can you see my table? Data 1, data 2, data 3. So I'll click on combine and transform. Combine and transform, evaluating query, nice loading, loading. So this is very, very efficient, especially when you get some PDF data. You don't want to be connecting to them one by one. You can just simply connect to all of them at the same time. Then when you drop, in fact, the most interesting thing is that when you drop another PDF of the same format inside that folder, it will automatically extract that as well. So you don't need to do it again, right? You don't need to do it again. Just drop a PDF inside that particular folder. Then it will update everything. So I have um, three more minutes for Mr. Michael to come up, but let me just quickly show this. So inside the particular one, so Power, Power Query is now telling me which one are, are you using as your sample? Are you using the first file? Are you using data one, data two, or data three? So if you check first file, you can see that I have how many table? One, two, three, four, five. I have like six table inside the first file, right? But I'm not using the first file as the sample. I'm going to use the folder itself, right? Which is the parameter up here. Just right click on the folder, which is this folder that you have up here. Just right click on this folder that you have up here. Once you right click on it, you see transform data. Then click on transform data. Click on transform data. Then once you click on tra transform data, Power Query is processing queries. Now it's processing my queries. It's processing my queries once I click on transform data. You see that this is very fast and efficient. In fact, I won't use 10 minutes to clean this, this almost this um, 30, 30 tables inside different PDF. I won't even use ordinary five minutes or 10 minutes, which is very, very fast. That is why Power Query is the most biggest data washing machine uh, for data. Now my Power Query is evaluating query. Okay. So now it has loaded. Now, if you look at this now, this is my final file. 
Park really has created a sample for me. Now I need to work on that sample. And you see this transform sample? It has already created different parameters, different functions for me, different M language. In fact, I don't need to create any M language. I just need to work on the sample myself. And it's very easy. If you look at the sample, you can see kind. On that kind, I can see page and uh, table. I can see page and table. So what do I need? Definitely I need table, not page, right? So I'll just come here, filter out page, and leave only table, right? Once I leave only table, these are the unique table I have. I'm working on the sample. Remember, once I'm done with the sample, my final file, which is stock exchange here, should be done as well, which is this stock exchange, should be done once I'm done with my sample, right? So I have just only table. Then what do I need? I need only data. I don't need all this kind. I don't need name. I don't need this. So once I right click on this data, I can remove other columns, right? I can remove other columns I don't need. Then from here, I will expand my data. I don't want you to use original column as prefix. Then once I expand and I click OK, then my file query will expand, right? So look at this. Now I have a sample, but I quickly need to clean this up, right? This first row, this no, 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 showing this, I would like to see this. So if you go to your own tab, there's something called remove rows. So from remove rows, I can do remove top rows, right? I only to, I want to remove the first row, which is this row one, right? Then I will just type one, click OK. I'm still cleaning the sample, remember? Now I need to move this bond description up. So I need to use something under transform called use first row as headers. Or I can also click on this table side here and use use first row as headers. This first first headers. Now, once I do that, I have my headers now. I have um, bond name, c symbol. I have different. I have all of them now. Very smart, right? But if you look at this data very well, remember that there are different tables inside that single PDF, which means the table header will also be inside my data. So I need to click on the drop down and remove the header of that table. So for bond description, for example, if I scroll down on this data. I should be able to see bond description somewhere. Can you see bond description? So once I remove this bond description from here, then my data is clean and perfectly okay now. So now, since I've cleaned my sample, I can now go to my fact file, which is the uh, general file. Can you see this is showing error? So definitely anytime you're trying to clean a file, you should know that this chain type is always a problem, right? So once I remove this chain type, you should see that my data will now be fine, perfectly fine. If I even click on this data source, you can see data one, data two, data three. And I have different PDF inside, different table inside PDF, and I have them together. Now, if I want to change the data type, I don't need to be doing that one by one. Remember, there is one powerful thing on that transform called detect data type, right? Once I do control A to detect all the data type for me automatically, right? Then I'm done cleaning close to like 40 or 50 tables, right? How was that, Michael? Awesome, awesome. <laughs> uh, I've been taking some notes too. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. You're doing it now. You, you can't take a note. <laughs> so honestly, that's how to con con consolidate uh, different PDF, different table inside PDF, and you have plenty PDF, right? So definitely, you just need to just uh, keep on cleaning your data, data. And Parkway is very, very efficient and it's easy to use. You can see that I didn't write any code while cleaning all this um, PDF, and I didn't do any kind of code while connecting to that export data. So it's just by clicking, 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 then I am done. So I think I didn't use over my time, uh, my yoga. This is just two text two. Okay. Yeah. So we are okay. moving to All right. our powerful okay. MVP. So you can share your screen now. Uh, so I can carry on. Okay, great. Yes, sir. So, uh, All right. so I'm going to share my screen. And uh, I'm going to okay, great. So I let me just okay, great. So what I have to demo for us today is something that I hope you'll be able to apply because I see a lot of people have issues that this has been what solves those issues. And so I felt okay, great. Let me create something around what I see people experience, you know, a lot of times. So. Uh, you can all see my screen, right? Uh, Adiwali, can you confirm yes, that? Yes, I me? can. Yes, I can. Okay, great. So I can carry on at full speed. So this is what I want to take us through. Imagine that you work in an organization where you guys have different branches and uh, so let me just show you what I mean. 
by different branches. Okay, great. So you have different branches and uh, each branch has their own data, right? Now, when I say branch, for you, it might not be branch. It might just be different product categories, different business segment. It could be different anything, right? So the critical thing is, if you need to do reports that need to harmonize all of this data. So let me show you what each one has inside. I'm going to be using keyboard shortcut a bit more. Okay, great. So this is what's inside them, right? And um, let me just... Okay, great. So uh, I wanted to notice that there are some peculiarities that are problem that we want to solve in Power Query. Problem number one, the, each branch has a manager. Unfortunately, they've put the manager's name as a separate data outside of the table, right? So this is, you will, if it's to manually fix, no problem. But imagine every month. So this is every month. I have two months, but you get a pattern. So every month, the data comes that way, where there's a manager somewhere separate from the original table. And it's like that for all of the eight, seven, you know, ten, all the different um, branches that we have operations in. This is Zamfara branch. It's similar. If you go to Repat, on branch similar if you go to cardinal branch so how can we fix all of these to get something like this something like this where all of these issues have been resolved all the files in different so in files so let's just list that. problem number one different files problem number two is that each file has different sheets month by month sheet so you could have like january february march like all the different months are separate sheets okay problem number three is this one right so the there's something we need that is not part that has not been typed into the data table itself okay so let's see how we fix all of them to get an outcome like this that is this is completely harmonized and so i'm going to go to an empty part bi okay so power bi empty i close this welcome kind of a window then i go to get data and i'm going to say from from a folder let me take a risk i have something that speeds up my pc i just hope when i speed it up <laughs> it's not going to crash the pc <laughs> Let's hope that so at least we will enjoy the old demo faster instead of having to wait too much. So far, nothing has crashed yet. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm hopeful that okay. So that's good news. Nothing is crashing. Okay, great. So things will be a bit faster with that now. Uh, I'm going to pick a folder because, like I showed you already, all those files are in a folder. So I'm going to navigate to the folder. Okay, so that comes up. Uh, thank God my PC didn't crash when I own that stuff. It's something I used to increase the performance of the PC. Okay, so the folder I have it in is a uh, sales reports version two. Okay, so I pick the folder. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, Mr. Michael. So once I pick the full great, I, I pick OK. And uh, for, so, for some of us that are not too new to Power Query and this experience, you these steps are not uh, something different from what you have experienced before. What I'm going to do differently this time is, if this was a case where there were not those kind of problems I mentioned, I can straight away go to combine. But because these things have issues that I need to fix. I'm going to say transform data, which is why we are demoing Power Query, because this takes me to the Power Query engine, and then I can do as much kind of transformation I want to do without, uh, without having. So, all right. And, uh, this is it. All of what is in that folder 
is what is being displayed right now. Mm -hmm. And then I want to narrow down to what is important to, to me. So I will say I need the content. I do not need, I do not need all of these are not important to me. What is important to me is what is here, the content. So I'm going to tell Power Query to combine for me the files. So I'm going to go here. So that's what these two arrows pointing on and downwards on an horizontal line indicates. And it's going to ask me that which sheet do I want to pick across all those files? Now, this is where problem number two happens. Problem number two, when you have different sheets, and in this case, this, this different sheets are not having the same sheet name. When it is a Potter court, it's Potter court December 2015. When it's Kano, it's Kano December 2015. So those of you that have used the combined in Power Query, you'll be familiar with the problem of if the sheet names are not consistent, then you get some issues. You will see how we can easily also fix that. So I'm going to just go ahead with starting with the uh, December one. I pick it and it's coming up. Okay, it's doing its work underneath. It's, it's toggling between the model side and the query side. I guess when it's done, it's going to bring back to the front the query side. Okay, it didn't. So let me send the query side back to the front myself. Okay, great. And it's already showing me their errors, which I'm not surprised. It, the errors are due to that name that are different in the different sheets. So let me just uh, quickly show you what I mean. The name's different means that when it's Zamfara, uh, the sheet name is Zamfara. And the one we just finished in the demo that I was picking, because it shows you just a preview of one, which we used to specify for everything. We noticed that it was Abuja that was showing there, right? So that's what is causing this problem we are experiencing now. And we want to go and fix it. So how do I go to fix it? I go back to the intermediate steps. So if you watch all of this, you can step back and, and try and follow the process. So I start from the beginning. Beginning is where it's, uh, so let me try and do Windows mind magnifier. Flying Windows, yes, let's see if that's magnifier. Let's see if that can help you to see some of what I want to show uh, better. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I'm going to step through the, this is the source, the source of the file. Yes, so that was the folder we connected to, right? And then the next step is this, which is showing, uh, Okay, go through all of the files in that folder. Make sure that only the files that are not hidden. So that way it doesn't pick up the autosave files. And that's why we can see only the uh, files that are not uh, autosave. Those ones that start with a, with a wave like a tilde. And then this is now saying, I iterate through each of the files and perform a function, perform this transform file stuff so after it does that i get to see the outcome of it so i will go to that transform file function this one this transform file function if i go to it which is this transform file here then you will see transform file if i expand the function codes so i think at this stage i need to uh escape from the oh boy i think i've pressed the wrong thing from the magnifier <laughs> so i need to close that magnifier okay great so i'm going to expand it and let you see what's inside you'll see that uh, it's saying go through the files in the so this is the each of the file pick them and 
pick a particular sheet. So this is what is causing the problem. It is looking specifically for Abuja, December 2015. We're going to tell Power Query that no, no, do not go and add code the name of the sheet. I want you to get for me the first sheet. So are you noticing what I've done? I've cleaned out that thing I say in item equals to this sheet name. And I'm going to say, get me the first sheet. So this is, pre, pre, uh, I'll zoom in that you don't have tables in them because if you have tables, you don't know which one will come first. So uh, it, I trace through the different objects in the sheet. And in my case, I only have sheets, I don't have tables. So definitely the first item, which is it's zero index based, which is why I'm typing zero here. So that first item is zero. So it counts from zero. So that's what I will do, uh, not cancel. So that, oh, but I have to retype it. My zooming, as, so I just type it and then okay. So by doing that, I'm going to fix the problem that we are having with the different sheet names. So if I go back here, I should no longer Voila, see, the problem is gone. Before, here we were having errors. We were having like error code, blah, 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 right? That is gone, okay? Then I have another kind of issue in the data. The manager name, I need it. I need it to be able to do a report to show the performance of the manager. Unfortunately, the manager name is showing as like something in the in fact it has put it as a as a column name so let's go try and fix that i'm going to go to the sample file uh, no, the transform sample file and then i will say i need a manager name so please do not promote headers because i need what is in that particular manager name site and so i am going to to also say, uh, in case you have come across column in Power Query, uh, this is what we have uh, come across it, then this is a good way to show you how it works. So I need this item, which is a cell. So I want to get the way to reference it. Uh, so I'm just going to right click here and say, had as a new query. And that had as a new query is so that I can just get this part out. I want to get this. That's all I need. Okay. So I want to get this Abuja, blah, blah. I get it. And then I go back here and I say, please, I want to add a custom column. And this is my, my custom column, right? Go grab for me this. Sorry, I, I made a mistake. I didn't copy completely. There is a pound sign here. All right. So go grab for me from great. So maybe let me repeat that step so that you will know that uh, I, this, I copied the, this, right? I go here. I go to add column. I go to custom column and I say this and I'm going to at this point say you should call it manager so that way it extracts for me the manager name okay so that we are making some progress but uh, this thing I have done I'm doing it too premature right so I should have done it later in the whole process because I still need to take up the column elders this column elders that are here. Okay, so the thing that is, I can step back here and do things I want to do. So you see, you can in between. I can take one or promote extra header. So whichever you want to do, you can promote until uh, until the one you want is header. But in this case, I just want to show you as many different ways. So after I've done that, and what I want as header is now the one on row one, I can say use first row as header. And yes, please insert that step. Okay. 
great. And then now I can step back here. OK, and uh, it's showing whenever it's showing errors, it's just because of some uh, changes in the. So I'm just going to re add it because of some naming. I don't want to if you change the name, it will work, but I don't want to take too much time doing that. So I'm just going to just re add it all over since it's not a tedious thing. I still have it in my copy uh, clipboard. OK, so great. I forgot to change the name to manager. OK, so that's great. And with this, so with this, uh, I hope you can still hear me. <laughs> Everything sounds really silent. I just want to be sure I'm still audible. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you, sir. Okay. Okay, great. I have fixed for all of I fixed for all of the December 2015 sheets. And how I say is a filter and I explain yes. It has correctly captured for all this that we have data for, even though the sheet names are different. So that's something that can save you a lot of stress. OK, so another problem we have is the fact that the branch is only on one, is only on the first row. The person didn't bother to. So how can we do that? Aha, welcome to something is still looking wrong here. Let me just go confirm. Yes, so manager here. Right. Uh, I'm just surprised why. Well, we can fix that later anyway. So ordinarily, once you transform the sample close to this one, so no worries. I'm just going to confirm from here if the changes I'm entering are working. So um, we can fix that later. It's not difficult anyway. So I'm going to do the thing I mentioned about fill series. So I'm going to right click here and say fill down. And that is what is going to make sure that that entire column, there is no blank. So it fills Abuja till the end. Then the, the next state, it, con it fills it also to the end of the data records for that state. OK, so with that done, I'm happy with what I have done, and I want to go check out the final outcome if it's having exactly what I want. So let's just uh, check out the final one. OK, uh, the fill series, it seems some of the things we didn't didn't come here, didn't float down here, right? So ordinarily it will. So I don't know why it didn't flow down here. In the one I did, it automatically float, but then I can show you what you can do to solve it. Uh, it's just, I just need to help it a bit <laughs> and go to home, advanced query, and uh, all these additional steps. I think that one worked up till, uh, let's, say promoted as let me just uh, say up to promote headers I copy and I go so if you here let me just go to advanced editor so I'm going to just make sure I do that part here too okay I'm going to push this in all right, so we have, but you will not need to do that. Uh, I think I don't know what I've done wrong uh, for it not to have automatically done. Most times it's naturally just flows down. So you're saying I spelled something wrongly. Move to pro. No problem.
going to go. Okay. Okay, so what I will do quickly. So what I'm going to just quickly this step. So I'm going to close this. I said so it will be a bit faster if I just uh, answer what I okay. I think I have five more minutes, so So, so it's not this complicated. I'm not sure this because I'm like do too much or what you've got the Excel. Like this is one approach you can. So I'm going to be I comments to me fast. Okay, so and this is an opportunity for uh see in the full full uh hello Micah. I think your internet is a bit um from Twitter. Say. Ah, but you, you can you see my screen actually? I hope you can. Yes, yes, screen. we can. Yes, we can. You can see my screen here, right? Yes, okay, we can. Okay, all right. So the, at least it's an opportunity for you all to just uh, again follow the process. So I'm going to, I'm not making any commentary. I'm just quickly just be clicking the stuff I need to click. So that we can uh, get back to the stage where I st started showing some funny. Okay. And I hope you know this is entirely to affect the war. to finish keeping that. So I'm going to quickly just stop as we said. I'm going to go here. I'm going to change this to zero. Okay. I've already explained why we are doing that. So like I mentioned, I'm not going to be repeating things I've said before. Then I'm going to cancel this remove this promoted headers. I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to extract out this because I need I need it. I'm even going to copy it right now and then I go back here. I'm going to take out or use first remove first use first row as many times as but let me just follow exactly the same steps as I showed before and then I promote this. And then I go to add column. I had custom column. So you see, this is even faster than if I was trying to fix that one. That's the funny thing with um, Power Query. Once you make a mistake in one place, it flows everywhere. So you have to be careful. And it's case sensitive too. It might just be that one started with capital A and the other one starts with um, small A and you didn't notice and you know, those kind of errors just keep cascading down to your Data. So let's go check uh, what again is it saying? Okay, so manager, yes. Okay, great. great. So it's working now. So that's what normal work without me having to. Uh, the fill down series, let me just do that. So I'm going to fill down. 
Great. And voila, I think this is it. So as usual, and use the go to home. Sorry. It detects data. So let's just quickly do that to detect the data types. And so I'm going to just all detect data type so that looks done and this should be time actually replace okay great aha so now the last part which is i think i'm on dot of time is i want to show you how to bring in the second sheet so this is like the december sales December 2015 sales. I'm going to be a bit faster now. And, but we still have uh, for 20 January, you saw in the Excel file that is January also, right? So how can I instantly bring this in without having to repeat all my work? I right click, I duplicate. So you can see my screen, there's also duplicate. You can extract too, but because of time, I don't want to use the extract. There is a way where you can extract all the aspects you need, you know, just extract it as a separate um, query and then you, you reuse it, but um, against time. So let's just quickly use the one that is a bit faster that I, I won't have to talk too much. And so, so I'm going to just rename this to the uh, January 2016 sales. OK, and then we are going to just modify a bit of things. So we need to go and check where the thing starts to change. So this is where it is calling the function. This is where it is calling the transform function. OK, so I will go and create another form function that I'm going to use. So I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate it. I'm going to call it uh, transform file two because of time. So I'm going to duplicate this also, this function. I'm going to also just because that makes it a bit. And then I'm going to come in and say uh, for this one. The source zero is one, so you get the file that is uh, the sheet that is the second. To apply all those of our hot stuff, the only other thing is uh, maybe, yeah, so it applies everything. I should have changed this also. But anyway, you get the whole idea. And then, uh, then I need to change this one to friends that to read this OK and then that is all I can instantly come here and say it should invoke the function that is function two OK and that will instantly and you can see now I have the same, I have January 2016 and you can combine. So if you go to home, you go to append queries, append queries as new, you can append all of these. So if I have more than one, more than two, I will do this uh, three or more. But since I have just two, I'm going to stick with just two tables and append them all and say you should append all these sheets that I have in my data, in my Excel files. You know, so like Excel file, multiple sheets, the multiple files, and I call this national sales, right? And uh, the other thing I wanted to let to show you all is uh, there are some functions that are important that I you saw me keep referencing. So if I want it to be meaningful for me to locate them, I can right click and say I want to edit the name of that function on of that applied step by I me, mean, and I will say this is the step that extracts the sheets and run transformation on it. 
So run and for time, I'm not going to use a longer comment. And then, so that's how, again, you can further change the name. Instead of using the default names that um, Excel use when you apply steps, you can create yours and create comments around them. And so this is it. And this is how I can, with this now, I can take it to Excel if I'm doing this in Excel or Power BI model site to start creating my analysis and visualization and, and all of that. So uh, maybe I'll just stop here. I wanted to also say you columns that you don't need. I don't need I can remove them and then this is what I want. And uh, so I do really, I hope I have not overstretched the time limit. I have oh, managed awesome, to awesome. at all, at all. As in, I was stay within I was acceptable. Writing like, I was writing that note as well. This okay. is awesome, especially the part of that um, manager. Especially the part of okay. that manager. Yeah. It's something that is very, very When you extract useful. the name, mm -hmm. uh, I typically yeah. have problem with that before. Wow. Yeah. I think that was awesome. That was my first time so of seeing I that. I don't know if there are questions for us. Um, originally, I wanted to also see I wanted to also show group by, but no, maybe another day. <laughs> I wanted to show that you can do group. Yeah, definitely. To extract the things in here, but let me not overstretch my talk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are so many things you can do in Park, really, like um, Mr. Michael said. You can just keep on learning. You can follow him, follow us as well, follow um, Telegram um, group and the rest. So let me even check whether we have some questions. So let me go. What led you into data analytics and what tool did you start with? I think that is for you, Mr. Michael. OK, so uh, I my journey started in 2011. So mm -hmm. I got a job with with Airtel and uh, the job role, though it is, it's a subsidiary of Airtel, but it was you know, like Airtel actually, they just gave it a different name so they could get project from other telcos. So it's called Conviva, but it's actually a tell. And my job role was business analyst and MIS. So in fact, MIS and business analysis executive. So it was a big title, <laughs> but I didn't know Excel. I didn't know anything. And the the it was there I had to start learning how to do analysis because my work involved analyzing all of our telco data in all the countries they had operations in in Africa, then 10 countries. And, you know, Telco always has a lot of data. So I had to, before I was forced to get good at analyzing data and Excel was one primary tool. Sometimes I use access, but Excel was the primary tool. And we create reports for the business guys to be able to track target performance and business and, and the technical guys to, to see utilization and, and the result of what they were. So that was what before that job, I the only thing I used to do was I used to say I climb masts. <laughs> so I was hmm. purely a technical person before that job. So that's how I got into data analysis, that job, and I kept getting other jobs that require me using analysis after hmm. that. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And whoever asks, thank you for asking as well. I'm sure you listened to Mr. Michael's story, right? So uh, somebody said, can we have a recording of this after watch? Yeah, definitely, we are going to post it on YouTube and you're going to have that recording. And let me look for another one. Fantastic. What if we have different headers in the PDF file? Hmm. So it's depend, right, for the PDF. So I think it's depend on the headers that you have. So for me, there is a trick. There's even a file that I cleaned, I think like last year. And then they have different headers, but it's still the same thing. But the naming convention is different. Like somebody calling uh, something date here. In another table, another person will call it trade date. So in another table, another person will call it um, time of sales. So, but it's still the same data, but the naming convention is is different. So there's a way you can you can do a little trick with um, Power Query. Instead of you promoting the header, you can as well just write the header yourself. You can remove the header. And just type the header yourself. So you remove that first tool. The other header, you remove it. You won't promote it at all. So you now specify your own header and how you want it to be. Then definitely your PDF is going to consolidate. Yeah, I think that's the same question. Then Mr. 
uh, Kule Shegun. How am I going to paste back the folder part you created with um, with parameter? Hmm. Okay, so for the folder part, for me, I think it's it's very simple to do. So it's just something that you just go to your to your folder, then you go and paste it. If I can show you my file query right now, let me just quickly show you how to paste it. So look at the data that I worked with the other time. Now my stem is working. Can you see that, Mr. Michael? Before it's not even showing. Sure. Okay, so let's check the next question. So the next question says, um, let me see. Can we get the data being used for us to practice? Hmm. So for my own PDF, I downloaded it from um, Stock Exchange. You can always go there and download as well. Then for the link that I use, the um, CBN, the CBN link is, is, um, is free as well. I can drop it in chat for people to go and look at the website and connect to the data they have there. So for Mr. Mike, I'm not sure. Can you share your data? Is this something you can share? Uh, how to just verify that there's nothing confidential in there. Uh, I think some of them. I will verify and maybe let uh, okay. Randy Wally know right. how uh, if I have to modify something before sharing. All right. Thank you very much, sir. So the next question says for PDF, must your data share have same column, number of columns, and structure for you to be able to consolidate? Hmm. I think I only always have this problem of structure, structure, structure. So actually, you can always find ways around stuff. Although it's advisable that your data should be in the same structure for your work to be less easier. But let's assume that you are in a scenario whereby you don't have the same structure. I've worked on a data whereby this particular month, they have eight columns. So next month, they decide to add more columns. They had like two columns to that data. So there's a way you can actually go around it. And I'm sure you can always find a way around it on Google. You can try on Google. You can also ask your questions on uh, Telegram and the likes. <sighs> Another one, you guys are awesome. Thanks for the knowledge share. Thank you, you're welcome. How long does it take to learn Power Query? Mr. Michael, maybe you should take that. How long does it take to, to learn Power Query? I think you should Okay, you want me to answer now? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm still learning and uh, so I'm not the right person to answer the question. The only thing I can always say is that uh, the, it's by doing. Mm. The truth is, uh, there, there's sometimes the aspect of Power Query that I teach or use in this demo are aspects that maybe I never even have data that have those problems. I have to create the problem myself. And sometimes most real life jobs I work with, the problems they have are always kind of very similar, such that if you are only just using it on those kind of things, you will not be aware of the other, other aspects of it. So I would just say that um, first of all is I don't know how long it will take to learn because Microsoft is always adding new things. I just saw some things that were added to that I'm just noticing today, and I'm sure next month they will have other things. So that makes it like something that you can never really. But then the other practical aspect is that. I, the more you use it, the more you will know, and sometimes you force yourself to use it. So things you would have done in ordinary Excel because you know Excel, you try and do them in Power Query too, even if you don't see any advantage to doing them in Power Query. So it exposes you to the aspects of it. And then there will be a day where you will have to do something in Power Query to now combine that knowledge to achieve that thing. And you find out that um, what you've been forcing yourself to do in Power Query when you had no reason to do them is now really, really helpful. So that's just my own uh, opinion about mm -hmm. about your question yeah. how long. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you. In fact, that makes sense. Even for me, for me personally, yeah. I think uh, I learned Power Query, let me say, on the job. It's not as if somebody teach me that this is how you use Power Query, this is what you must do. So I'm sure that Power Query is something you should be even able to learn on your own by just playing around with it, play around with it, go to Google, try and see some stuff. And I'm promising you in two or three months, you'll be good. It's not depend on the kind of problem you want to solve. That will not depend on your expertise, right? But Power Query should be something easy for you to learn because uh, it's a no code um, platform. By just click, 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 you're already doing some stuff. Yeah, so and I think the last question, how can I start or where do I start as a beginner 
this is really interesting. Mm. Somebody said, where can this start? Mr. Michael, I think you stay there first. Okay. Uh, you want me to also answer the how, how I start as a beginner? Yes, yes, oh, yes. I didn't get, I lost you. How can I, okay. how can I? Okay, so you say, hey, how can I, how do I start as a beginner? Okay. Uh, uh, well, you've started already. You've been in this webinar, you have started. <laughs> so that's one good news. So uh, just keep on at it. It's what you do that you get better at. So as long as you see that there is value in this and it's something that you feel is strategic for you to then and definitely you've started the right path, which is being exposed because this webinar has exposed you to some aspects of it. I'm sure people are getting ideas of what they can do. And that's why a lot of questions are coming from that PDF angle because People are beginning to think of, okay, I have one PDF there that I can use this thing on. And so uh, just keep on doing and learning and being in communities. Join the Telegram group of the Power Platform and mm -hmm. like that. As long as you keep learning, you keep uh, immersing yourself in all of this, gradually you will know it and also be using too. So that's how I think you should start and, and where to start is right where you are right now and doing more of what you are doing, joining webinars, learning from books, from online and from also doing, applying what you are learning. Okay. Okay, so, so I think um, that makes well, sense, Mr. Michael, my Oga. Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate you coming um, to bless us this afternoon with your plenty of knowledge. So we really appreciate you uh, and we are saying a thank you thank on behalf you, of um, all the leaders in Nigeria Power Platform or your state user group. Thank you very, very much, right? And for everybody that joined us as well, all our attendees, thank you very much for joining us. We'll meet again next month. That will be first week in July next month. Remember, we normally said we, uh, we meet twice in a month, right? So next week, next month, first week in July. We meet again. Thank you very much for joining us and we really appreciate you for coming. So always strive to learn. So Mr. Mike, I don't know, maybe there's only other thing you want to say maybe mm -hmm. about what you do and the rest. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that are still to the end because I think we've used like one hour, 20 minutes. So we want to especially appreciate you and uh, have a nice rest of the weekend. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Mm -hmm.